we're going to start this series with a little history lesson. Why? Because understanding how SEO used to work, how it has progressed, and what you now need to avoid is a very good way of creating context and helping you to understand what SEO means today. When SEO was first born, Google's algorithm was a lot simpler and manipulating it to your own ends was a lot easier as a result. Back then, Google looked at two key factors in determining its rankings. Those factors were keyword density and links profile. Your links profile, also called your backlinks profile, is essentially determined by how many links you have pointing to your website coming from other sites. This serves two important roles. Firstly, links help Google's robots to find your website. Bots crawl the web by reading content and following links from one site to another. If you have a link on a site that Google has already indexed, then this will allow it to find yours and add it to the network. At the same time, Google views links as testimony, assuming that a website would only link to another website if it thought said website was good and had something valuable to offer its users. Google would also assume that if you have links from 20 websites about hats, then your site is probably going to be about hats as well especially if the anchor text has your search phrase in it. The other factor was keyword density. Keyword density meant how many times your website would repeat the words that you were trying to rank for. The more content you had and the more often you repeated the same phrase throughout that content, the more likely you would ultimately be to get ranked for that search term and to show up high in the SERPs. Of course, it was also important to research the keywords and to make sure they were actually being searched for. For this, marketers could use Google's keyword research tool in order to check the volume of searches and to get an idea about how much competition there was. A savvy optimizer would then be able to look at terms with the highest search volumes and lowest amount of competition and then try to rank for those phrases specifically. This simple algorithm makes a lot of sense in theory and should have helped Google to find content that people will be looking for quickly and easily. It would read the content in order to see which site was the most relevant for that term and it would look at which sites had the most links from other websites. But the problem was people eventually cottoned on to the way this worked and began to take advantage of it. Search engine optimizers realized that all they had to do to get to the top of Google was to create as many links and as much content with keywords as possible. So webmasters began to spam link directories and content farms, submitting their links everywhere they possibly could. They began to pay other content creators to place links on their pages, and they would also trade links. Most websites ended up with a massive list of links somewhere on one of their pages. And these would just be other random sites that had contacted them and asked to exchange links. Worse was what started to happen to content. In a bid to create as much content as possible and to use the keywords as often as possible, creators began to churn out content in huge quantities while giving no regard to quality. They also began using keyword stuffing, which essentially means repeating keywords over and over again, even when it doesn't make any sense. A typical website from the early 2000s might read, Are you looking to buy hats online? Then you have come to the right Buy Hats Online website. This is the best place to buy hats online for anyone who wants to buy hats online, Carolina. As you can see, this content is completely nonsensical and will be highly off-putting for any real visitors looking to make a purchase. And then it got worse still. Creators began to actively steal content from other site owners and spin it in order to make it unique. Now, Google won't rank duplicate content, otherwise it would risk making every search result identical. So, content spinning, as it came to be called, essentially means that you're taking an article or a blog post and using software in order to exchange many of the words for synonyms. So, a sentence that read, these are the softest, warmest, and most attractive hats on the net, would become, these are the most comfortable, most insulating, and most beautiful hats on the web. 
And because the site owner didn't have to write that content themselves, this meant they could publish thousands of posts in a short space of time and bomb Google. Well, that's the theory at least. The reality is that, unfortunately, most spinners do this instead. These is the squittyish, hottest and very best beautiful hats on the fishing net. Again, it's just gibberish. So, by placing thousands of links on other sites, using their keywords as the anchor text, and by filling their sites with tons of useless content, website owners were able to get themselves to the top spot of Google. This system was so easy to abuse that some people could even get completely unrelated websites to the top of specific SERPs against the owner's will. You could make it so that searching for big idiot will bring up a picture of your friend, for example. This was called a Google bomb. Obviously, this started to make a mess of Google's results, and so Google had to adapt and get smarter.